The UK and EU are desperately trying to reach a deal before the deadline on the 29th of March. The two have only a few months to reach a deal before the Article 50 deadline, and the UK leaves the EU without a deal. But to say the two of them are negotiating is a little misleading. The UK isn't negotiating with one cohesive entity. Instead, it's trying to reach a deal with all of the EU nations at the same time. The EU is made up of 28 nations, including the UK, and they all want different things out of Brexit. We made a video recently where we tried to work out what the EU's ideal Brexit deal is. In that video, we asked our audience if they'd be interested in a thorough breakdown of what every EU nation wants out of Brexit, and the response was clear. So here we are. We're going to run through all 28 EU nations and discuss what they want from a Brexit deal. Up front, we want to recognise that in every EU nation there's a variety of opinion, and as such, we've tried to distill the key themes and wishes of both citizens and those with political power. We're going to split this video into two parts, with the second part coming out in about a week's time. It seemed fair to run through the nations in order of size, so we'll go through them in descending order of population, covering off the first 14 nations today. So let's get started. The largest population in the EU belongs to Germany, so let's start there. If the German government are clear about one thing when it comes to Brexit, it's that the UK shouldn't be allowed to pick and choose. If they're leaving the EU, they can't cherry pick the best parts of EU membership. In fact, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel brought up the issue of cherry picking straight after the UK Brexit referendum, and she hasn't let up on the matter since. The Germans are so clear on this matter because they want to ensure that the single market stays strong even after the UK departs. If the UK is allowed to continue accessing the single market and cherry picking the best bits of EU membership, then the concern is that other countries will want to do the same. Generally, German politicians are more concerned that Brexit could lead to other EU countries wanting similar deals than they are concerned that a hard Brexit could damage Germany's trade and economy. We'll be discussing in a future video if the EU and countries like Germany specifically rely on the UK for trade and if they'll suffer post-Brexit. The consensus in Germany seems to be that even if they do suffer economically, long term it's worthwhile in order to protect the single market. The French government are similarly concerned about the ripple effect that Brexit could have across other EU members. They're looking to protect EU institutions and preventing the union from unravelling. In addition to these concerns, the French are also interested in how trade will work post-Brexit. They want to ensure that trade continues to be simple between the EU and UK. Due to their proximity to the UK, it makes sense that France does quite a lot of trade with the UK, and they want to keep this trade flowing smoothly. Also due to their geographical location, they're focused on ensuring good fishery arrangements with the UK. Finally, France is interested in ensuring that regulatory standards are maintained after Brexit. The concern is that the UK will undercut France and other EU nations by slashing employee and environmental protections. France is keen to prevent this from happening and protecting the level playing field which exists. The UK's Brexit plans are something we've discussed at length on this channel. In general, the UK isn't able to reach an agreement on what it wants from Brexit. Considering how close the original referendum was, it's hardly surprising that the UK is divided. If you want to find out more about the government's plans for Brexit, check out our video on Theresa May's Chequers plan. The deal may have been widely rejected by the EU, but it's the government's only plan at the moment, and May has said that if this deal isn't agreed to, she doesn't think any deal will be made at all. Italy has a variety of interests when it comes to the Brexit deal. Generally, the Italian government favour a softer form of Brexit. The Italian Foreign Ministry said that protecting the EU's budget and EU agencies were their top priorities. As we've discussed in our other videos, the UK is a major contributor to the EU budget, and after Brexit, the EU may have less money left to play with. Italy is looking to ensure that the future of the EU's budget is secure, even without the UK's contribution, a concern which is echoed by a number of other EU countries. The other concern that the Foreign Ministry highlighted is that EU agencies which currently operate in the UK may not be able to continue to work effectively during the transition. Agencies such as the European Medicines Agency currently work out of the UK and would need to move to an EU nation post-Brexit, a change which could cause disruption to their work. The Italian former Prime Minister brought up a number of other concerns when talking to Theresa May last year, including protecting citizens' rights and ensuring that the changes to UK financial services didn't negatively affect Italy. Overall, the opinion of the Italian government is that it would be easier if the UK wasn't leaving at all, and that the UK should be encouraged towards a softer form of Brexit. 
Like most other nations, Spain is keen to ensure that the UK's Brexit deal doesn't lead to a collapse of the EU. Spain's focus is working together with its fellow EU27 nations to continue EU unity, rather than compromising too much in an attempt to make a good deal for the UK. They absolutely subscribe to the EU mantra that the UK can't be allowed to get a better deal by leaving the EU. However, Spain isn't the same as other EU nations. Ireland is the only country which shares a border with the UK, which has been a big source of tension for negotiations. Spain has a similar issue. While it doesn't have a border with the UK, it does have a border with the British Overseas Territory, Gibraltar. We discuss this fully in another video, but the fact that Gibraltar shares a border with Spain makes negotiations even more difficult. Spain is also very affected by changes to free movement of people post-Brexit. A lot of British expats live in Spain, around 309,000 people. In addition to this, approximately 116,000 Spaniards live in the UK. Because of this, it's especially important to Spain that citizens' rights are handled carefully during the negotiation process. This also could impact tourism. Around 18 million Brits visit Spain every year, and British holidaymakers contribute approximately 13.3 billion euros to the Spanish economy during their trips. The Spanish therefore want to protect the rights of not only those who are living abroad, but also Brits coming to Spain, as losing this flow of tourism could cause a big hit on the Spanish economy. Spain also wants to have open trade with the UK. The United Kingdom is one of Spain's closest trading partners, and they'll be keen to protect this relationship. Large Spanish companies like Telefonica and Banco Santander could be affected by changes in the trading rules, and also shifts in the UK's telephony and banking regulations. As such, Spain would prefer a softer form of Brexit, one which protected citizens' rights, holiday makers, and Spanish investments, while keeping the Europe strong and discouraging its own separatists in Catalonia. Like Spain, Poland has put a lot of focus on citizens' rights post-Brexit. People from Poland are the largest foreign-born group in the UK, with over 1 million Polish people living in Britain. Therefore, it makes sense that they want to protect their citizens' rights in the UK. When we made this claim in another video, that Poland wanted to protect the rights of citizens living in the UK, people hit back saying that we are wrong and that the Polish government would want to stop their citizens from leaving to the UK to prevent their best talent from leaving Poland. The thing is that Poles who live in the UK often still have family and ties in Poland, with a large number sending money back to their home country. If the Polish government wasn't concerned with their citizens' rights while they lived in the UK, this would have a ripple effect through their country and economy. Most importantly, Polish citizens who live in the UK still have the right to vote in Poland, and cutting them off or not caring about their rights while they live in the UK wouldn't be a particularly sound political move. Poles sending money back to Poland may be important to the Polish economy, but far more important is EU structural funding. Poland is the largest recipient of funding, with the nation getting 89 million euros from the EU structural funds between 2014 and 2020. As such, if the EU budget were to shrink without the UK's contributions, this could significantly impact Poland's bottom line. As we discussed in our previous video, Poland is also concerned about Russia's military strength in the region. The UK is one of the strongest military nations in the EU, and without them, the EU may not be able to offer as robust a defence to Poland. Despite this, Poland has refused individual talks with the UK, and is continuing to pull the EU line so they may not be as flexible and easy to persuade as the UK might like to think. Like many other nations, Romania is concerned about protecting its citizens' rights. Similar to Poland, they have a large number of their citizens living in the UK, approximately 411,000 people. They are also concerned with how EU funding is affected by Brexit. So to explain, here's a chart for context. The bars show how much each country received from EU funding between 2011 and 2015. The X's show their net contribution, that's the amount they contributed to the budget, minus what they received back. Romania received more from the EU than they contribute, meaning the budget cuts will affect the support they receive. While they don't receive close to as much funding as Poland, they do worry that without the UK, the EU will struggle to support nations such as themselves. The Netherlands are very close to the UK when it comes to their citizens and economy. You're probably noticing a trend now, but like other countries, the Netherlands has a decent number of citizens living in the UK, around 57,000 people. And while they don't have as many citizens living in the UK as other nations, they're still keen to protect the rights of their people. In addition to this, they want to protect their right to trade with the UK. 
The Netherlands trades a lot with the UK. In fact, the UK is their second biggest EU trading partner after Ireland. Like the other EU nations, they want to protect the EU by not allowing the UK to cherry pick, but simultaneously they don't want to punish the UK too much. Hard trade rules will punish the Dutch as well as the British. While the Dutch do uphold the EU stance, they do need to protect their businesses and citizens by protecting their trade with the UK. The UK is also a very important trading partner for Belgium. 8.4% of Belgian exports end up in the UK. Therefore, Belgium is very clean to see their trading relationship continue to flourish post-Brexit. It's also worth remembering that the European capital is in Belgium, and generally the EU is popular in the nation. Less than 30% of Belgians say they'd vote to leave the Union if they were given the choice, so few would want to risk the EU falling apart due to the UK being given too favourable an offer. Despite this, Belgium is looking to the UK for support in the light of recent terrorism incidents in Belgium and around Europe. They're hoping that the EU will have a continued security relationship with the UK, including intelligence sharing, something that the EU as a whole has expressed interest in. When it comes to intelligence sharing, that's something that the Greek government hasn't been doing a lot of regarding Brexit. The Greeks have said relatively little about Brexit, taking a long time to release any public statements at all. More recently though, the Greek government has started to discuss their concerns surrounding a no-deal scenario. A recent Greek government paper warns that the EU could face an economic meltdown if no deal is reached. They say that if there isn't a deal with the UK, that the EU would find that they had a £10 billion annual gap in their finances. Greece's concerns are that without the UK's financial support, the Union's poorer countries might suffer political and economic unrest. Greece isn't alone in this sphere. As we've already discussed, Italy, Poland and Romania have similar concerns, but the EU's budget commissioner is also worried. He said that the EU would have to find an extra £20 billion a year if the EU is to continue with its current budget plans despite losing the UK's funding. A lot of countries talk about the order they'd like negotiations to happen in, often saying that citizens' rights and debt should be handled before dealing with future relationships. We haven't brought this up much so far, as this seems to be a fairly settled area and it's generally similar for every country. However, the issue of timing is the Czech Republic's primary stance on Brexit currently. The Czech government is insistent that the UK and EU should come to a deal settling all conditions of divorce before discussing future relationships. Of particular concern to the Czechs is ensuring that an agreement is reached regarding the island-Northern Ireland border. This is something that a lot of EU countries are interested in, as it's vital for the EU to have strong borders to protect its trade and custom arrangements. In order to protect the integrity of the single market, the Czech Republic is sticking close to the EU's official position on Brexit. In July, the Czech Republic European Secretary said that while the Czech Republic may be critical of some aspects of the EU policy, this does not mean that we won't stand behind a very strong position on the integrity of the single market. Portugal also says that it's sticking with the EU's vision in order to promote a level of unity. This is common for most EU nations, but Portugal has a history of good dealing and negotiations, so this is likely to be especially true of nations like Portugal. Portugal is concerned with losing the UK though. Generally it seems that they'd rather the UK had a much softer Brexit than other EU countries are looking for. Portugal is a strong believer in the EU's connection with the United States and Canada. The UK is close to both of these countries, especially considering the so-called special relationship between the UK and US. This means that if the UK were to completely leave the EU, the bloc would lose one of their closest ties to the US and Canada. Therefore, Portugal is looking to keep the UK on side so that they can support the continued relationship between the EU, the US and Canada. Very often, Brexit negotiations come down to money. How much does the UK owe the EU? How much does the EU lose from their budget post-Brexit? Portugal's biggest money question is how much does the EU lose due to a weakened EU-US relationship post-Brexit? Sweden also has big problems with the financial agreements post-Brexit. The Swedes want to ensure that they don't bear the brunt of the EU's economic losses post-Brexit. In recent years, the UK has committed to putting a lot of money towards EU initiatives. With a major percentage of the EU budget coming from the UK, Brexit means that the EU will have to recalculate how it collects and spends its money. The Swedish government want to ensure that the UK stays true to their spending commitments. 
They are one of many EU countries who support the idea that the UK should be forced to pay the EU £37 billion in order to settle their debts as part of the divorce bill. The Swedish government say that the focus has to be on protecting the EU. Sweden's foreign minister said that the UK should have to take the consequences for Brexit and cover the costs of their departure. Sweden does not want the UK reaching a favourable deal with the EU. They have been long-time allies, and the UK is one of Sweden's most important trading partners. However, the Swedish government has said that their focus is on protecting the union, saying that the political project of the EU comes first. Hungary is one of the few countries to diverge from the official EU stance on Brexit. Hungary supports the UK's right to leave the EU, and says that the UK shouldn't be punished for choosing to leave the bloc. Generally, Hungary is pretty pro-sovereignty, and as such, it's only natural that they support the UK's attempt to regain theirs. Even if Hungary is worse off after a hard Brexit, they see the right to sovereignty as more important than most other EU countries. Instead, Hungary's top priority is on protecting the rights of Hungarian citizens in the UK. They have commented that they want to see a system where working permits are automatically renewed for Hungarian citizens living in the UK post-Brexit. While they don't want to completely support the EU's policies relating to Brexit, they do want to see the UK pay what they promised to the EU. Hungary would suffer if the EU budget was hit hard by Brexit, and as such they're looking to keep things as stable as possible. Hungary may deviate from the official EU policy and want a much softer Brexit than some of the other countries. But like any other EU nation, they don't want to make things too easy for the UK. If the UK gets an amazing deal, it's likely that the EU will suffer in other ways, whether that be damaging the strength of the group or cutting into the EU budget. Unfortunately for the UK, even countries who want to support Brexit can't make it too easy for them. That's the end of part one. We'll be covering the other EU countries in part two, which will be released in the next week or so. Make sure to subscribe to be notified when this video is uploaded and get more news and Brexit information from TLDR News. One last thing, a few people commented that they'd like to hear what important non-EU nations want out of Brexit, places like the US, Switzerland and Norway. If you'd be interested in that video, give this video a like and comment below to let us know.